Okay, hi guys. So we may as well start the session today. Um, so um, welcome. Um, this is a session brought to you by uh, Adobe and also by uh, Tinkering. Uh, my name is Richard Curtis. I'm a local um, 3D Photoshop guy in the UK looking after imaging. So that's uh, Photoshop and Lightroom. And on the line we also have Justin Sai from Tinkering. Um, who's going to talk to us about um, Photoshop and the tinkering. So what we thought we'd do today is go through Photoshop um, for half an hour or so and just talk about how the 3D interface works and how you can send a print through to the tinkering Ditto Pro for 3D printing. And then, uh, then Justin's going to come online and he's going to show you some of the things that he's been working on uh, when it comes to 3D printing with the, with the tinkering. Let me go into Photoshop a little bit and talk about why Adobe is in the 3D space and what solutions we're really adding there for 3D printing. So it was a couple of years ago when we first started looking at uh, 3D printing uh, after we'd made some additional changes to Photoshop in the CS6 realm where we actually tried to make um, 3D more performant and more streamlined across the across the workflows that creators would have. That involved putting um, 3D and Photoshop on the graphics processor, but also enabling the workflow items. So when you create an, an object, you then automatically get a ground plane and lights and shadow renderers and things like this. So we just made it a bit more easy to get into. Then a couple of years ago, we looked at the 3D printing and said, you know, what are the major problems in the 3D printing industry that, that we might be able to fix? And it turns out there's quite a few problems. Um, problems around printing just standard geometry to a 3D printer can be quite tricky. Printing things like overhanging parts and having to make scaffolding for certain uh, prints. Having to create a model with infill and specify an infill. But look, also looking at more technical problems with meshes, like single and uh, multiple meshes, holes in a mesh, um, single uh, thin walls, uh, single polygon walls, uh, minimum wall thickness based on requirements. And we also want to look at things like color and how we bridge the gap from going from uh, an FDM printer like a Tinkering Ditto Pro all the way through to something like an M Core or a Z Corp as in full color and what that experience would look like. So the idea and the vision that we had back then was actually to um, make a single pipeline to enable the creative to be able to use Photoshop as a finishing tool, if you like, for their 3D content, but to be able to prepare their models for print and allow Photoshop to automatically um, do that fixing process as part of a control P, very similar to what we have in the 2D world. So ultimately, Photoshop's able to fix models and send it around a print pipeline based upon the fact that it might be a Ditto Pro, but it also might be a full color printer. So in conscious of time, how does it work? Well, if you're already using Photoshop, it should be fairly easy for you to start working because everything is actually on the move tool. Now, Photoshop's a little bit different as in you can bring in a, um, you can actually make a, 2D, a 3D object in Photoshop from a 2D object. So for example, I can very quickly go and create a rectangle just using the rectangle tool and then I can use the 3D menu to convert that into geometry and the Photoshop engine will go and pull that into, into geometry. You see we have a little widget here uh, on the screen. I can move that around and this, the idea of this is that I can uh, orbit the camera or I can uh, pan the camera up and down, or I can move the camera closer by dolly in the camera. And just hovering the icon or the mouse over that area will give me that control. If I click on an object, I can then resize the object by scaling it uniformly, or I can move the object around, or I can rotate or make it thinner. Now in Photoshop, unlike 3D software, we only have three panels for 3D. We have the 3D menu system here, which contains the object, the lights, the environment, but also any faces that you have on the object. And it depends on how many shells you have. We'll also have the shells there as well in each material for each shell. We have the layer system, which you probably know and use already for your 2D work. So 3D just sits inside the layers panel like a 2D layer would do. And then of course you have the properties panel. And in the properties panel, you get properties about wherever you are in the 3D system. So for example, if you're on an object like we are now, you get to control things like shadow catching and casting of shadows, um, but also any extrusions um, of any extrusion of any depth. You can also get into things like deformers, very simple deformers, 
for inflation and also beveling can be accessed from here as well. When you click on a material, you get the materials um, property up and materials can be changed. This is a front face, so I could change the front face to be a nice silver color, which you would then do on the screen over here. And I can obviously then change the color of the diffuse, which will then go and change the color um, on that material. I can also go in at any point in time and edit those textures and we'll get into that at another point in time on a different webinar. This just gives you an idea of how of how Photoshop works. So Photoshop 3D is all driven by the 2D engine, apart from when you bring it in from the outside world. So that's a very simple explanation of how you can work with 3D. Now, you might want to go in to do some deformation. So when, once you've clicked an object, you can press the V key. And the V key, you can change the extrusion on the fly, but you can also change any twists and tapers that you may have in that geometry and you can go and create that taper. You can also create twists as well and you can twist the geometry around. If I press the V key once again I can then go into inflation so I can inflate the front and I can inflate the back and the materials in the property of the inflation I can change the front back or the front and the back. I can also go negative so if I change the inflation strength um, downwards by grabbing that and I move it the other way I can go inside as well. So I can create some very simple geometry from primitives inside the Photoshop engine. Okay, that's giving you a deep dive into 3D. Let's get into something a little bit more useful. Let's get into bringing an object in from the outside world. So I'm going to choose open for now. And in the open menu, we support multiple base formats. So we support 3D Studio Max, we support Collada, we support Flash 3D, Google Earth, we support IGS, we also support STLs, U3Ds, VRMLs, OBJs, PLYs, and you know, all the different formats. So the idea is I can bring an object in. Now if you print into a Ditto Pro, you're probably going to be bringing in an STL. Okay? So I'm just going to search for an STL. Uh, let's find something like this guy. Now the first thing you will see when you bring in an object into Photoshop is you'll see the 3D units. This is telling you how big the geometry is. It's just so you know how big it is because if you try and increase it or reduce it you might have issues with the polygons because you're now working with a rasterized format. Once you press OK you can then bring that through and then inside the Photoshop engine you will then see the object. And again this works exactly the same as I just showed. So if I just grab the scene now I can move the object around. Okay. Now, let's talk about the printing pipeline. Say, for example, I want to print this to the tinkering. Now, I haven't really thought about um, what support requirements I need. I haven't thought about uh, how many shells this has got. I haven't thought about any holes. I haven't thought how the designers put it together. They may have put it together with two shells and then inverted one shell or make one shell, invert it, and put them together, and that will create you inverted triangles. So it's really about managing that and, and, and doing that type of thing. But I haven't thought about any of that. I've just got an object. In fact, there's two objects in the scene. They're both a single shell, actually. And I can tell that because I've only got one object here in the 3D menu. And again, I can go into the materials if I wanted to do as well. And that's OK. So to print this out, I can go to the 3D menu. And in the 3D menu, I'm going to choose 3D print settings. 3D print settings will take me into the 3D container. Now, this is showing me, if I just zoom out here, this is showing me a base, okay, in this cage. This cage is a, is a quite a large cage at the moment because we're set to a 3D PDF. So I can export geometry into a 3D PDF format, which allows me to contain textures and shells and all this kind of stuff for viewing. So I can send that to my client, or I could view that or send it across the web and just use Adobe Reader from version 7 to view my geometry. Also change the lights and measuring and commenting and all that kind of stuff. But today we're going to focus on the Tinkerine. So as part of the Photoshop CC 2015 release, we introduced support for the Tinkerine Ditto Pro and Justin will talk a little bit more about that later on. If I select that now, you'll see the actual environment change slightly and you'll now see the fact that the cage now depicts the size of the Tinkering Ditto Pro print area. So this is tailored to the Tinkering cage size. What we're trying to do inside Photoshop is really to make it very, very simple 
for everybody to start printing 3D objects. So again, I'm not thinking about supports or geometry or bad geometry or holes or anything like that. Hopefully you won't have any bad geometry. But if you've downloaded any items from things like Thingiverse or um, any other 3D content libraries, you can't guarantee that those objects will print without having to go into 3D software to fix them. So you have to send them through that process to get them fixed. Now, some 3D applications for, uh, for, for some 3D applications can't take big models. We can also take large models in as well, and we can also simplify those models down. So using the simplify mesh, we're able to reduce the number of polygons in that mesh and reduce it down to something more usable. So say something like 20,000 rather than 40,000. So I've been working recently with a project which had about nine and a half million triangles, and I reduced it down to about half a million triangles, and I was able then to print it on the tinkering because it's now nice and small. What the idea here is that we're not trying to lose any geometry, we're trying to keep the geometry, we also try and keep the textures as well. So we're also creating normal maps, just in case anything has to be removed and moved into a map. So we're doing that at the same time. So here's my object, it's pretty okay. I can tell how many triangles this object has got when I bring it in. By looking at the info panel, it tells me there it's got 43,000 polygons. They're the only two times you'll ever see polygons inside Photoshop because the idea is you shouldn't have to think about it. So the other thing a uh, print user has to do to print to the tinkering is choose the quality settings. So for example, I've got high quality, which is 100 microns. I've got medium, which actually is 200 microns, not 100 microns. And low is 300 microns. Don't worry about the numbers here so far. These are just a guide. So I can print to high, medium, and low. And the output will then tailor towards a layer slice of the detail level that I've chosen. If I want to print something out onto the printer, I can just simply print by pressing the 3D print button. And once I do that, Photoshop will then what's called unify the scene and repair the mesh. It will also build any scaffolding. So it looks at the constraints of the Ditto Pro and what the Ditto Pro needs to make a successful print. And it will then go and push my model around that setting to be able to create me a model that's able to print on the tinkering. So this will take only a couple of minutes to do that. Now normally this process can take a while. You have to go through various iterations normally, so actually you can work out what needs to be um, supported through the build process, or which areas of the model have to be fixed, or if you have any infill requirements, you've got to kind of start printing and guessing, and waiting and printing and guessing, and go through that multiple times to get a decent print. The idea of using Photoshop for this is the ability to be able to send it down the print pipeline without having to worry about anything. It does it for you. So the automated fixing process will then send me out a model which is ready to print. And you can see there that we now have a model. And actually, funny enough, we only have to support this model in three places, which is just here on this handle. Everything else is actually under 45 degrees or over 45 degrees. That means that it will be self-supporting. So as we print this model up through the layer-based system of the FDM printer of the Tinkerine, we will print the, the support material at the same time. And as we get to this point here, we will automatically support this part of the object so it doesn't fail. You can also see at the bottom these little points. These little points are really just to hold the overhanging parts down over here. If I use the Move tool, I can actually move in closer into the geometry. So I can get an appreciation there of what it will look like on the printer. And I can see there that I've got little supports in place. Now, how you print this is up to you. You can print on the, on the tinkering without a raft. I've successfully done that quite a few times, and the results are great. However, when you have really small artifacts like these, you might want to think about using a raft. But it's up to you. You can try it and, and see. It might be, and it depends how you're printing it, because if you're using blue tape, you're probably going to be okay. If you're using some kind of glue, then you know you you'd probably be okay as well. But just check it when you're printing little artifacts. Just make sure because sometimes they can be quite thin and they can actually break off. Now I've done a lot of work with the tinkering guys to make sure that anything we print should print without any kind of um, or it should print without falling off. We've tried to make the supports nice and thick. So actually, you pay a little bit of price on the output, but actually you should be able to guarantee a print with or without a raft. Now this is showing you a repair. So if this was if this geometry had to be repaired for any for any reason, 
and say for example over here the shell was too thin it would then show me in blue if I've got any holes in the geometry or the designer left a hole in the geometry we would then patch that up and you see a red um, icon or a red um, area on the model and that would show you that we've had to fix some of the model um, from that point of view. I can turn show repair off which will show me the model and it will give you just a representation of how it will come out on the printer. I can also ray trace this as well and when I ray trace it what it will try and do is it will try and look at the layer slicing from the tinkering and try and give me a rendition of what that will look like when it comes out on the printer. So if I zoom in here I should be able to see some ridges. Okay, there you go. So I can see some ridges. So now it's trying to mimic what it will look like when it comes out of the printer. So at least you get a visualization of that layer slice there. Okay, so that's how you can print on the tinkering from a model. Pretty easy stuff. You haven't really got to think about it. Now what I can do, of course, is it may be you want to put something else in that scene as well and print that. And again, I'm not really having to think about it too hard. But to do that, I'm just going to create some text very quickly. And I'm going to say uh, jug. Okay. Here's my piece of text. And I'm just going to then uh, extrude that piece of text into 3D geometry, which I've done very quickly by hitting the 3D button at the top of the screen. So there's my object. Now these two aren't connected at this point in time. They're still, um, they're still separate layers. And if you look in the layers palette, you can see there that we have a jug layer and the layer one, which is the old jug. Now I can merge them together by clicking on the destination and then using the shift key to select the other layer that I like to bring into it. And then what I can do is go into the 3D menu and then merge those 3D layers together. That will then put that object into the same scene. Now it's big. So I can then scale it down and put it into the geometry. Maybe I want to create something creative and have it sat on the top of the jug. And I could do that and that would be fine. It may be that I want to just have that at the front of the jug. So I'm just going to change the extrusion. I'm going to the coordinates of the object and I'm going to reset the X, Y and Z to be zero and put this in a better place for printing. So there's no point in printing it vertically we can print it on its back like that. And if I want to put that onto the ground plane next to the jug, I can. Maybe it needs to be smaller, which I can scale that down. I can then go to the 3D menu and say, move object to the ground plane. It will also put that on the ground plane as well. Now maybe, just for kicks, I want to show you this printing. So again, I'm not feeling to think about too hard. I actually want to print it in a different way. I want to print it so it's like vertical. You would never print this normally like this. But actually I want to just show you what it happens when I do that now. So let me just change this around. I'm just going to reverse move this around and for some reason it's flipped the wrong way. And this is where 3D starts getting a bit tricky because you start pulling in take this around a little bit there we go okay one second there you go so there's my object so I want to print it like that actually and see what happens now obviously I can't print that because um, it's floating and because it's a funny angle even if I put it to the ground plane like this I've still got bits of it that need support throughout the print. So normally you'd print it on its back, but just for kicks, I'm going to send this through to the print pipeline and show you what happens. So again, I'm not really thinking about it, I'm just throwing things on there. And you can see there that it's showing me what it will print like on the print bed, so it's going to fit inside the print bed. And then when I go to um, the print button, it will now take that independent shell, because now there's two shells, the letters and the jug, it will take them through into the printing pipeline and Photoshop will recognize the fact that it needs support and it'll put supports in place as well as holding the handle of the jug it will also put supports in place holding up the lettering of the letters so it means that I can put anything into my my bed 
put it wherever I want to put it, and then send it down the print pipeline. Photoshop will then look at that geometry, look at any issues with that, and it automatically fixes it based upon the requirements of the, of the printer and the material that you're using. While it's doing that, it worth, it's worth talking about the printer profiles. The printer profiles are all open source, so actually you can actually customize printer profiles or build other printer profiles if you so wish. There is open documentation on the internet, I'll give you my blog at the end of this session, um, so you can see that content there, but it's perfectly easy to create it. Now you can see there, with the output, we're actually going to start printing this JUG over here, but you can see we're going to have to support it pretty heavily, just because we've actually um, suspended it in midair. So this is giving you an idea of how complex it is going to be to print, and it might be a decision that you actually print it on its side. That would be better from a render point of view, but also from a, a slicing point of view as well, it'll be faster. However, you can print it like this if you want to give it a go. Okay, so hopefully you found that of interest. Um, there's lots of other things you can do with Photoshop and 3D. Um, it's quite deep, uh, but like I say, it's not a modeling application, so it's still good to have a 3D modeling tool if you want to build something. But you can build things with Photoshop and actually use primitive models to build things, and I, we have artists that are doing that right now. But if you are using your 3D printer to print content from the web and content from a content repository, something like um, you know, Thingiverse or you know, another kind of 3D content provider, um, you can bring your content in here and rather than going through a pain process of actually fix the holes in geometry yourself, just send it through Photoshop and actually send that straight through to print. Okay, I'm just going to stop sh my sharing now and I'm going to hand over to Justin. Hi Richard, uh, thank you for all that, and yes, I'm ready to give my spiel here. Alright, so, um, yeah, Richard and I have done a lot of work on the Photoshop and Tint Green profile, and I'm just going to show you a couple of, I guess, case studies of a couple of prints that I've done that have turned out very, very well, and I guess wouldn't have been able to print be printed without the Photoshop profile. So first one here is this dinosaur skull. So this actually uh, required an insane amount of support, but um, the model which I did download from Thingiverse uh, just came like this since it was a 3D scan of an existing object. Uh, wasn't really meant for 3D printing, but since there was uh, so much support needed. Our current slicing engine, Tinkery Suite, uh, wasn't really prepared to uh, use it. So I uh, threw it over to Photoshop. It generated all the support, which was, it weighed pretty much more than the print itself, but uh, it supported everywhere it needed. And thanks to that, after a bit of flyer work, a bit of cleanup, printed out a pretty good looking model. Um, a little bit of trouble on the teeth, but other than that, it actually printed out uh, pretty great. And the next print I'd like to show you is this ice dragon. Oh, that's the finished one. But here's what it looked like when it came out of the printer. Again, support, crazy amount of support, but printed everywhere we needed it to. And then after a bit of cleanup, printed out great. Again, it would be pretty, very, very difficult to print with. Green Suite. All right, um, and I'm just going to jump back to Photoshop. I'm just going to jump back to Photoshop and show you a couple of the features that Richard did and that I really like to work with. So I'm going to drag in, besides going file open, you can also just take an STL and drag it into Photoshop. So I'm going to take my keychain.stl, just import with the default settings. And here we go. Uh, we have this keychain that uh, we actually use for one of our really fundraising campaigns. And we'd like to give them out at trade shows. Um, it's pretty small, so we don't really like to print them one at a time, so we like to duplicate them, so print maybe a, a plate of six of them at once. So what you can do 
and so you can right click on the 3D menu over here and duplicate the object and it'll give me another instance of my keychain. <coughs> my keychain. So there, now I have two. So then when I go to my 3D print settings, make sure my Tinkering Data Pro is there. Just make sure they're both in the bed. So now I can print more than one at a time. I find this is useful, especially for uh, certain prints you need multiple of. So printing like a car or something, you need four bids, uh, you can pay multiple times. It's a lot of time saving when you have to print. Uh, just keep printing and printing and printing. Especially when you're managing two, three, or four printers at once. You don't want to have to be taking on and off all the time. So I find that really useful to have there. And just, yeah. Uh, one thing that I really liked about Photoshop uh, that our current Tinkering Suite doesn't have is the ability to, uh, like Richard showed you, previewing the support structures and then being able to take it on or off at will. So after the slicing happened, uh, uh, these ones don't require support, but he uh, was able to toggle support and wrap on and off. So kind of being able to slice just in time. That's a feature that really, really kind of accelerated my workflow. Uh, so we talked about uh, getting all the models from online or making a simple geometry. But one thing I like to do, and I think is really neat, is that you can go from the 2D to the 3D really quickly. Uh, and it doesn't have to just come from Photoshop. It can also come from other Adobe programs. Uh, such as Illustrator or the mobile app Adobe Shape. So um, I'm going to do it in Photoshop, but uh, if you had Illustrator, uh, a lot of people are familiar with the pen tool, but you can basically use the pen tool in any of the Adobe products, or most of the Adobe products, in whatever weird shape that you want. And then all you have to do in the 3D menu down here, you just have to select work path, the source from the work path, the extrusion grade, and very quickly you can get uh, kind of extrusion of whatever shape that you choose. And uh, you can do all the, I guess, the kind of functions that Richard showed with modifying a 3D, 3D object, of the rotating, the scaling, and everything. So really expands the pipeline of work. It's, it doesn't have to just be 3D program to slice it. It can now be from uh, any or most of the Adobe products to Photoshop to the Pinkering Ditto Pro. Um, kind of just expands the uh, work kind of capabilities and also people that are familiar with the tools such as Illustrator and others, you can just bring them right into Photoshop print. Um, uh, opens up the doors to a lot of possibilities, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, one of the things I want to bring attention to that uh, is a really cool thing at Tinkering that we've been working on is our platform Tinkering U. And it's an online repository, kind of like being the and the others, but we focus on uh, project-based learning. So all the projects we have on our platform have learning outcomes. And not only that, but we make sure that all the parts are printable, they're not going to break it when you go to slice them, and they're all uh, functional. Uh, right now, all of the, the models on our platform are free, but we're going to be having payments soon. And what that means is that uh, if you're a developer and you want to submit your models to us. Um, you can sell it for a fee and uh, generate revenue that way. It's called To Green You because we're trying to encourage educators to use these in their classrooms. Uh, we feel there's a lot of value in education for 3D printing. So some things we've been doing is we download the model parts uh, from To Green You, we send them to Photoshop and print them there, and uh, so far they've been turning out all great. 
So been really happy with Photoshop and the way it's been printing. Um, yes, one last thing we wanted to bring attention to with Photoshop. This strange structure that I've built here. Uh, it's going to one of the export options. So, uh, what you can do if you don't want to print it right away, but you've done a lot of model work uh, in Photoshop to build whatever you built, you can print to STL instead of the Tinkering Data Pro. And what that'll do, once you hit the print button, is that it'll give you the STL file kind of the raw model file. And then you can take that and you can uh, modify it in other 3D programs or you can bring it into Tinker Suite, our own slicer. So, shape so, so then I can uh, into Tinker Suite, which is kind of the slicer that we package with our tinkering machines, we bring that in and there's our shape. So if you do have the preference of working in Photoshop to model or making the model from an Illustrator file, you can then bring it into Tinkering Suite and print from there if you're familiar with Tinkering Suite especially. And uh, in Tinkering Suite, we do have a bit more control than Photoshop. Uh, it does require a bit more experimentation, but uh, it's another I guess, option, depending on what pipeline you're familiar with, uh, to be able to use uh, to achieve whatever printing results you want. So uh, controlling things like the infill, the number of walls. Uh, normally the default, uh, like Photoshop uses, is great for 90%, like 95% of the prints, uh, especially the ones on can be new, they can do great with the defaults. If you are kind of the power user, you want to like, up the strength of your print, or you want to up the speed of your print, to because you know it doesn't need a lot of, I guess, uh, tolerances. You can just up the speed like crazy. Uh, you can turn the support on or off, just like Photoshop. Yeah. And so yeah, just another pipeline that you'll be able to use in the kind of Photoshop community. Photoshop environment. Okay, um, I think that was just about everything I wanted to share with you uh, with the Tinkerine and the Photoshop. Great, thanks, Justin. Well, so hopefully you found that interesting. It was kind of a very quick, um, you know, show of how um, how Photoshop works with three D printing. I write um, blog posts on the Adobe blog at blog.adobe.com slash Richard Curtis. And um, I write on a Friday typically much. And if I see something in the week, I'll write that as well. So the, the tinkering, the tinkering organ is here as well. Um, we've also got things in adding bump maps and lots of things inside um, Photoshop that you can do um, as well. So it's definitely worth having a look at that. I do have a 3D blog, a separate entity where I pull things together and you can actually you know, uh, read those in context of just 3D printing. Um, you can also find me at uh, Twitter as well, at Richard Curtis on here. So if you are interested in learning more about what we're doing and about what's happening, please join in the social network. It's always uh, it's always worthwhile to uh, see what's going on. It'd be great. And if you need anything from us, any specific information, please let us know. I'm more than happy to do that. So thanks very much for your time. It's great to speak to you uh, in England. It's a very sunny evening. Um, hopefully you can have a lovely day and maybe make some prints for your printer. Okay, so thanks so much, guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.